First, I want to welcome everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time to attend. I hope that uh, the presentation is going to be a real eye-opener for you. It's a little bit, probably a little bit different than what you've heard before, whether you're an options trader, or a seasoned options trader, or it's a long-term trader, period. I want to talk about some things that really um, the industry as a whole ignores, and, um, and it really is important that you focus on some of these things as a trader. And as I go through this presentation, I think it's going to become really evident as to why that is the case. So I've entitled the presentations, How an Average Options Trader with a $5,000 Account Can Use Warped Trades to Create a Seven-Figure Fortune Within Five Years. And some of you are like, man, that sounds kind of hypey and that's not really possible. But I, I'm telling you, your perspective is going to change by the time we get through this presentation. And I've uh, been in the industry for a long time. I've talked to thousands and thousands of traders, and most of them are struggling, right? And if you're still struggling, it's probably because of one of several things, maybe all of them. Number one, if you're an options trader, it's because options are too complicated. You got all the, uh, you have all the Greeks, and you've got to figure out how they go together and how they mesh together. Well, I want to tell you that. Uh, options are not too complicated. I don't ever use a Greek when I trade options. I've been trading options since 1987. Uh, so you don't have to use the Greeks. They are actually much more simple than what most people give them, uh, believe them to be. Uh, you might think that options are too risky. And believe me, the way most traders trade options, options are too risky. <laughs> But you don't have to trade options in a way that they're too risky. So we'll talk about that today and how to reduce risk and increase probability. And then traders, most traders are using an outdated method of trade size management or worse yet, none at all. They have no, uh, no plan with regard to trade size. They have no rhyme or reason with regard to trade size. It's all of a, uh, it's a gut feel. Uh, or they say, you know, never risk more than one to 2% of your account, which actually is not very good advice at all. And uh, again, that's that there's definitely more details into that but it's usually one of these three things and and most of the time it's all three things with option traders um, and why they uh, struggle to do very well and most people struggle to achieve the success they know is possible we right we're all in it and we know there is some level of success that is possible but they struggle simply because they underestimate what's required to generate a consistent weekly income in options. So what I'm going to be covering today is, number one, how to potentially retire early as a trader. Um, I'm going to show you how that is actually something that is uh, within your grasp if you follow a formula. And then I'm going to talk about the backbone of my options trading strategy. And then I'm going to talk about what I call warped PPD. And this should simplify options for you tremendously. And not only simplify options, but simplify your general idea of what, what needs to be done in order to take advantage of these weekly options. And then I'm going to give you a special invitation at the end. Now, I, I, like I said, I've been in trading for a long, long time, and I'm going to tell you right now that we are currently in the midst of the most lucrative time to be a trader. Never before have we had more access to more information than we do right now. Never before has there been technology at the, our fingertips to help us more than it has been right now. And more specifically, even, uh, there's never been the opportunities that we have right now with weekly options. In fact, just in February of this year, SPY added Monday expiration options. So now SPY has Monday, Wednesday, and Friday option expirations. And for those who know how to take advantage of that, that is a very, very uh, uh, tremendous opportunity as far as weekly options are concerned. Yet, despite 
this fact, despite the fact that we have more technology, despite the fact that we have more access to information, despite the fact that we have these weekly options and the, and the opportunities that are associated with these weekly options, 85 to 90 percent of all traders will lose money just as they did when I started trading back in 1987. And I was using the Wall Street Journal to look at previous day's option prices. That's how long ago that was. And uh, I was very young, uh, so don't get me wrong. I, I wasn't old then. I was very young. I was 16 when I started. And um, yet, despite all this, the same stats ring true today as they did back then. And that is 85 to 95 to 90 to 95 percent of all traders lose money. And part of the reason that that is the case is because 90 percent of all traders focus on where you get in and where you get out. And I'm telling you, this is not what is going to allow you to achieve any kind of meaningful success over time. Yeah, I, don't get me wrong, it plays a part. It absolutely plays a part. But if that's where your focus is, that is not going to create wealth in trading. It, it, it doesn't have the ability to on, uh, uh, on its own. So most traders focus on where to get in, where to get out, picking market direction, catching the big move, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, swing trades, tops, bottoms, reversals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And again, I don't want to discount, I don't want to completely discount it. It plays a role, but that's not what is going to generate wealth in trading. Now, some of you may have been lucky. Some of you may have bought a stock at a low price like Amazon or maybe a Netflix several years ago at a low price, thrown $5,000 into it, held on, and made five, six, seven, eight hundred percent on your money. All right, but the truth of the matter is, is that that's not going to happen very often, right? So A, it doesn't happen very often. B, you're still at risk. You're, you're, if you throw $5,000 into a stock, you're risking $5,000, period. There is no guarantee that a stock is going to do anything, right? So you're still risking $5,000. So it's not very efficient with regard to risk. Um, then even if you do buy that stock and you go in, most of you cash out, or most of you would, let me put it that way, most of you would cash out long before you ever got to five, six, seven, eight hundred percent 800%, right? I'm just being honest, right? You see a, a stock double, tell me you're not out of there, <laughs> right? Much less five, six, seven times what you paid for it. So if if you're one of the few, and I mean very few, who happened to throw $5,000 into a stock and you watched it go up at six, seven, eight hundred percent, and you held on and you grabbed it, how many times can you repeat that? Very, very unlikely. So it's just not a way to be able to generate wealth. And if that doesn't convince you that you need to approach trading from a completely different paradigm, let me throw this out at you. Uh, this is a recent article, and there are actually many articles like this because this is very, very common. It says, some 66% of large cap active managers failed to top the S&P 500 in 2016. And that's actually very common every year. Now, what is a large cap active manager? That's a professional trader. That's a professional trader. And 66% of professional traders in 2016 failed to beat the S&P 500, and that's a common stat year in and year out. And you know why? I'll tell you why. I did research a long time ago because it, it fascinated me why uh, these traders who are supposed to be professionals and experts, and they're getting into stocks, and they're analyzing these stocks, and they're buying stocks, and they're buying stocks, and they're getting out, and they're buying stocks, and all of that activity, and they could not beat the S&P 500. Most of them, most of them don't. And the reason is because when I started this study back in, I think it was like 2000, 2000 or 2001, I forget when it was, but it's, it's remained consistent. And the, and the uh, S&P was up about 15% that year. And um, I narrowed it down. I looked at, at why the S&P was up 15%. And, the S and out of 500 stocks, the entire move, the entire 15% return that year could be attributed to just 25 stocks, which means that if you were in the other 475 stocks, you would have broken even. 
So that's how that's how hard, that's how difficult it is to accumulate and achieve any kind of meaningful success through normal trading, through uh, uh, focusing on the entry and the exit rules. All right, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to completely blow your paradigm out of the water here. I'm, I'm going to show you the power of just $10, the power of just $10, and this is going to blow your mind if you've never uh, if you've never paid attention to this, if you've never focused on this, uh, it is uh, very, very incredible. All right, so what is the power of $10? Well, I'm going to switch that to the power of compounding, and I'm going to switch that to the power of compounding $10. All right, so here's the situation. If you can make just $10 a week, all right, just $10 a week, $2 a day, if you can make just $10 a week in a low risk option strategy and you use a proper trade size plan, a compounding plan, do you know how much that $10 a week can grow into in five years? Here's what it can grow into in five years, $38,000. If, if you can just make $10 a week, that can grow into and compound $38,000. Now, how much easier do you think it would be to make $10 a week to find some strategy, which I'm going to help you out with that as well, but to find some strategy that will make just $10 a week on average. You don't even have to do it every week. You can do $20 one week and nothing the next week. You can lose $10 the following week and make $20 the next week, et cetera, et cetera. So as long as you, over a long time period, you average $10 in a low risk strategy that will compound into $38,000. But if you can do a little bit better than that, if you can if you can just make $20 a week on average, so over the course of five years, you average it all out and you've made $20 a week non-compounded. If you properly compound that, that $20 a week can grow into $140,000. All right, so just Double the amount and look at, and, and you're talking about four or five times greater on uh, the effect of compounding. Tremendous, tremendous. This should be your, you don't need to worry about being right all the time. You don't need to worry about picking the right direction all the time and picking the right stock all the time. If you can just focus on some strategy, some low risk strategy, that will just make you $10 a week or $20 a week. You're talking about doing better than buying Netflix and holding on for five years, buying Amazon and holding on for five years. And it's a repeatable process. And it is much more doable than, uh, than a lot of those complicated methods out there. Now, if you increase, if you can somehow figure out how to average $60 a week, and that's, that's just $12 a day, if you can average $12 a day and you compound that in a lower risk strategy, you compound that, it turns into $1.2 million. All right, now, if that happens in five years, that's great. But what if you only average uh, $20 and you go for, for 10 years instead of five years? You're still looking at over a million dollars and compounded. So this should be your new focus. This should be your new paradigm. Uh, it, because it's much more simple than trying to pick the right stocks and trying to pick the right direction and trying to pick the right entry point and the exit point. Yes, again, it does play a small role, but you're not trying to make a killing with that aspect. All you're trying to do is just make a little bit in a low-risk strategy and then let the compounding do the work because that's the way you build wealth in trading. So the number one goal with regard to uh, to profits Okay, my actually, what I tell traders, your number one goal is actually not profits. Your number one goal overall in trading is survival. You have to survive first. If you survive long enough, you'll eventually figure out how to achieve that $10, $20, $30 a week, and then you're off to the races, right? So number one is survival. But once you get past that, the number one goal with regard to your profits should be low-risk consistency, low-risk consistency. And that is um, one of the goals that you should absolutely 
get involved with. So the secret to wealth building is consistency and consistency combined with compounding. Those are the two factors that you need. And fortunately, weekly options will absolutely give you that ability. But before I get into the weekly options, let me first tell you that lower drawdowns is also very, very important. Lower drawdowns is the key to geometric growth. It increases your ability to grow your account geometrically. It increases your ability to compound the account. So the bigger the risk you're taking, the slower the compounding is. All right, so let me give you an example. Here's strategy A and strategy B, and it doesn't matter what they are. It doesn't matter what generated these. Uh, it's just for an example numbers um, with regard to compounding. If over 10 years you make $30,000 non-compounded, that's just $3,000 a year non-compounded, but your drawdown or your overall risk is only $1,000, you can grow that into $900,000. All right, so $30,000 non-compounded over 10 years grows into $900,000 compounded as long as you can keep your drawdown to $1,000, which, again, you're not asking to make a killing because you're only looking at $3,000 a year in profit on average, right? So that's that's not an undoable ratio. But if you have an average drawdown of about $3,000, well, that same $30,000 only grows to about $300,000, and it's because you have to be slower with how you, you geometrically grow your account, how you compound your account, all right? So... That's why I say you want low risk, and that's why uh, one of the uh, strategies that I focus on for compounding is in the weekly option area. All right, so you want to generate consistent low risk weekly uh, income, and I'm going to show you through the weekly options opportunity several ways of how to do that. Actually, I'm going to give you the formula for doing that, and I'm going to show you how to minimize your drawdowns, how to lower your risk. Lower, lower risk, increased probability. In fact, here is, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of trades that I took a couple of weeks ago. These are actual trades that I took using weekly options in SPY, specifically uh, Friday, Monday, uh, Friday and Monday um, expiration options in SPY. So uh, this is a risk graph, and it's, basically it says that when this trade ends, uh, wherever the underlying market, which is SPY, uh, ends at, that's going to be the projected corresponding profit or loss. And you can see that there's only one very small area here where there's any significant risk, and that it's to the downside significantly. This is only a two days. There was only two days left for this trade, and so the market to realize that very small risk would have had to um, uh, move down a whole bunch in a short period of time. And then if it moved up, there was a, just a very small, slight uh, risk to the upside. And this trade, don't get me wrong, this was this is not just one trade. This is actually a combination of a couple of trades um, that I placed on. Uh, but here's another example of a similar trade that I placed on uh, that had no risk to the upside, and there's only just a little bit of risk to the downside, and it's ridiculous uh, with regard to the p &L. now and again this is not a single trade this is actually a combination of a couple of trades and um, it's not always available like this the uh, you can't always get this kind of, of significant um, skew in the risk reward ratio and the probability but I'm just showing you examples of once you start to realize what uh, weekly options can do for you the kind of things that you uh, can do with them. This is actually the trade that started off uh, one of the previous trades. And you can see it has a long um, uh, profit projection range, and then the max risk is about $250, but the market has to uh, scream to the downside over the course of two days. All right. So that kind of gives you an end, it kind of gives you a goal, an end goal of what you ultimately want to be able to do with weekly options. Now, how did I get into all of this? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me before I give you the formula for uh, high probability, low risk weekly option trades. All right. So first of all, I, I mentioned that I started trading at age 16 and uh, I took my first trade 
and I ended up losing money on that trade. I it, There was a bunch of hype going on. It's a long story, but a bunch of hype going on uh, in the town that I grew up in. Uh, there's a company that, that was based out of that town. They were talking about uh, being taken over. So I got caught up in the hype, and I bought some stock options, and they weren't taken over, and I lost money. And that was kind of my introduction, and there are two things in life that I hate. Uh, the first is losing, right? So I lost there, and I hate that, and the second is losing. So <laughs> uh, when I lost money that first time, it kind of hooked me, and I say, okay, you know what? I I am very interested in figuring this thing out. So I began um, studying and uh, teaching myself. Self. And by the time I was 19, I doubled a trading, a $5,000 trading account in one month. And the truth of the matter is I got lucky on a trade. I, I bought some options in bonds and um, uh, made a favorable move. I thought, you know, I was that and a bag of chips. I doubled the account, but in about two to three months, I lost everything again. All right. So uh, obviously I'm still learning at this point but at the age of 21 having learned several lessons instead of just going in you know getting lucky uh, in an account I figured out using paper charts I figured out a strategy methodic uh, methodical strategy for entering and exiting and I turned a $10,000 account into over $23,000 in less than three months and at the time I was married I uh, had already had a kid I got married Married right out of high school, and um, exactly one year later, had my first child. And within seven years, we had five kids. So uh, I had a family. I uh, was putting myself through school. I had a full-time job, and I remember when I did this. And I'm looking out my kitchen door and I'm just, uh, my kitchen window. It's like it was yesterday. And I just thought of my. I just thought to myself, man, Ryan, you're tw uh, you're only 21 years old, and you did this. You are that and a bag of chips and some peeps and coke i mean i thought i was it not gonna lie uh, pride was there <laughs> and uh so i continued to methodically trade that and within three months again that twenty three thousand dollars dropped to almost twenty five hundred and i had a real dose of humble pie at that point and it was at that point that i quit trading and I quit trading. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing this again, mainly because I couldn't afford to. <laughs> but I'm not doing this again until I figure this thing out. And that's the path that took me to a different paradigm. That's when I started looking at money management, trade size, compounding. That's that's why I lost money. Every time that I did well and then lost money, it was because I was risking too much. Bottom line. And so um, I figured that out, and over the next four or five years, I became an expert on trade size, on money management. I learned everything I could about it, and still it wasn't, it wasn't satisfying. The, the, the uh, conclusion of what was out there wasn't good enough for me. I felt like there could, there could be a better way, and so I created a better way to approach compounding to approach trade size and so you might want to say I wrote the book on the subject and so at age 26 when I had all these kids um, and uh, they're all grown now and I've got five grandkids uh, and two on the way by the way just found that out thank you very excited about that um, five four of them are married and, and my fifth uh, child my actually my fourth daughter she's getting married in less than a month so uh, quite quite a few years away from that nonetheless uh, that's what I did. That's what got me started. And since that time, I, I've had a completely different approach uh, to trading in general. So it completely changed my paradigm, not only about trade size, but about how to approach trading in general. And, and so at age 29, um, having studied just about everything you can possibly imagine, every approach that you can possibly imagine, I was called one of the industry's most complete traders. And um, I uh, spoke at Omega World, some of you may know about Trade Station before they were sold out uh, several years ago, but they were uh, they had a conference every year, and I spoke at their conference, and um, 200 traders attended my session, and I guarantee the profitability of a single trade. Wouldn't do that again today, although you would love this trade. 
Um, it doesn't happen very often, and I and I was very very confident, probably too confident that it was going to work out, and it did. But I guaranteed the profit profitability of that to all 200 traders. I said, if you take this trade and it doesn't work out exactly the way I say it's gonna work out within 90 days, then I will refund what you paid Omega World to attend this conference. They didn't pay me, they paid Omega World. So I was on the hook for $160,000. That kind of gives you an idea of, um, of the different kinds of approaches that I've looked at. And of course that did, it made 2,500 bucks uh, within three weeks and I was off the hook, but um, still, I wouldn't do that again today. <laughs> uh, at the age of 30, I entered a live trading contest, and I entered it uh, with only one month left. There, it was a 12-month contest. I entered it with only one month left. I ended up taking third place. I fixed a 42% gain uh, for that month, and again, third place. And that's when the other traders had an 11th month head start. Uh, then at age 31, I entered the same contest and I grew my account 613% in 72 days. It was a new record. No one had ever done that before, uh, not before and not since. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a testament to the power of compounding. And yes, you have to have an entry and exit strategy, but the true growth is compounding. And over the years, I've experienced a lot of different uh, trading feats, some really incredible trading feats, actually, including an option signal service that went an entire year without a loss. It went 54 winners in a row. But I got to tell you, it hasn't all been good. All right, you might, in fact, you might want to call me the Thomas Edison of trading. I've seen everything. I've done everything. I've tried everything. I've I've tried a thousand approaches to find the one or two that work or a few approaches that work. And I focus on those approaches, but I've tried everything and I've had more than my share of failures. But here's the key. The key is that when you do something and it doesn't work, that you don't lose very much. That's, it, it, drill that into your head because we all have things that we try that don't work. So the key is that you don't lose very much. But when you have something that does work, you maximize it through the compounding and it far exceeds the risk. So to the point where it's impossible for you to lose $10,000, but if it does well, you can make 150 or 300 or over time, maybe even a million. Right, so that's that's a paradigm that you have to approach from. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a little bit about me. And um, now I want to get into the option strategy because I do want to spend a few minutes talking about this. I think it's going to again change your paradigm. If you haven't figured out already, I question everything. If somebody says do A, I say, well, why not do B? <laughs> and that's just now, that's just my personality. That's the way I, I approached. Um, uh, that's the way I approach money management. I, I learned everything about it, and I'm like, why is that the best way? Surely there is a better way. And so I started looking at uh, how to do that. I did the same thing with options, and you know why I did that with options? I'll tell you why. Because every time I bought options, I ended up losing money early on in my trading career. Every time that I bought options, I ended up losing money. So I figured out, you know what? I'm going to start selling options. And I was 21 when I uh, started a, an option selling account. And so I started selling options. And within six months, I was down. I was still losing money. So I bought options and I was losing and I was and I sold options and I was losing. And so I'm like, you know what? I got to stop listening to everybody. I got to figure this out on my end. So I began really figuring out what the key core principles were behind option trading. And so um, I asked questions and I tried to simplify it. I tried to narrow it down to what really matters, what's practical in this. And so I'm gonna start off by asking you a question. Uh, which option here is cheaper, option number one or option number two? Option number one is a 200 strike call with three days left to price at a buck 10. Op uh, option number two is the same 200 strike call, but it has 30 days left and it's priced at 365. So which one is cheaper? Well, obviously option number one, right? Well, I'm gonna give you a different view on this, uh, a different paradigm. Again, 
Uh, and this paradigm, I, I get these kind of emails all the time where traders say, hey, Ryan, your, your uh, view on options completely changed how I trade. And even uh, Mr. Bonner here, he said, I went from qu um, quitting. I was so frustrated to consistent profits. So this is very, very powerful stuff here that I'm about to show you. All right, so PPD. I want to introduce PPD, and it's very simple. I call it price per day, price per, per day. And the price per day is simply the time value of an option that is divided by the number of days left on that option. That is the PPD, all right? Most third graders can figure this math out. You don't, you don't need to figure out the Greeks. You don't need to, to go in and try and figure out how the Greeks work together. It, start with this, and it's third grade type of math, all right? Time value divided by numbers late. Uh, number of days left equals PPD, and I'll just be honest with you. Part of the reason, <laughs> part of the reason uh, that I had to figure out the simplicity of it is because I'm I'm not very good at math, <laughs> so I'm not making fun of anybody uh, that uh, uh, that is not good at math because I was not good at math. I had to work very very hard to understand math concepts. All right, so uh, just a sidebar. Anyway, out of the money uh, option. Here's an example of an out of the money option. It costs $300, it has 30 days left. You divide $300 by 30, that comes to $10 PPD, right? That's the average price per day of that option during the life of that option. And it's very straightforward, very simple to figure that out. If it's in the money, not all of the option price uh, is extrinsic or time value. Uh, so you take the extrinsic value and you divide that by 30 days, and it gives you the PPD of that, right? And so you have uh, 250 divided by 30, that gives you $8.33 uh, PPD. All right, so now, if you calculate the PPD on these options, now tell me which is the more expensive option and which is the, more, uh, the cheaper option, all right? So if you divide the 110 by three days, what do you come up with? And if you divide the 365 by 30 days, what do you come up with? Well, the option number one has a 36 cent PPD and option number two has a 12 cent PPD. So which now is the cheaper option? Well, option number two is cheaper because on a, uh, on a per day basis, it's only 12 cents compared to 36 cents. All right, keep that in mind. Now, if I sell both of these options over the next three days and the underlying market goes nowhere, the 200 strike call will be worth zero, right? And it will have dropped by a buck 10. Whereas option number two, if the average PPD plays out, then option number two would have only dropped by 36 cents. Now tell me, do you see some sort of relationship there that you might be able to take advantage of? Is that, is that not, is it not jumping, kind of jumping out at you, what you might want to do with these two options? Um, that's, that's how logical this is. That's how simple this is. The formula for consistently profiting in options. And this is a general formula. It's not, it's not, absolutely true. You have to apply the formula with spe uh, some specificity, so it's not absolutely true, but the formula for consistently profiting in options is to buy cheap PPD options and sell expensive PPD options. All right, so if I were to go up there, what do you do? You sell the expensive PPD option and you buy the cheap PPD option. That's the formula. And there are, of course, many, many ways ways to do that. But here's a graph of what that formula looks like. And the red line is a chart, of, a PPD chart of the seven-day option versus the blue line, which is a PPD chart of the 14-day option over the next seven days, all right? Not over the entire life of the option, but over just the next seven days. And so the formula here, if you were to put this on a graph, uh, is simply to sell the red line somewhere and buy the blue line somewhere. Um, and so those are different strikes. 
So you can uh, sell, for example, a 206 call, and you can buy a 209 call, right? And you, the option that you're buying is the one that expires later on. So it's a it's it's what's called a diagonal spread, and most of you probably know what diagonal spreads are, but it's probably never been um, uh, explained to you how you uh, put on each leg of the spread in such a simple format or in su uh, such a logical approach to uh, to option trading, and specifically weekly option trading. All right, so this difference in the PPDs, I call this my warped PPD, or uh, which is where the the term time warp comes from. Uh, it's because of the time, the skewed time values in between various options. And the introduction of Wednesday and Monday expiration options, uh, which Monday just occurred in February of this year, so they're brand new, but they allow the greatest efficiency advantage ever with regard to these warped time values. There are many, many different ways to take advantage of this, but Monday and Wednesday and Friday options only exist in SPY, so you can take advantage of this in other uh, stocks and uh, that, that have weekly options, and you can do a seven-day and a 14-day option, but with SPY, you have a much greater granularity in how you're able to take advantage of time decay because the rate of time decay, as most of you know, and if you don't, great, I'm, uh, you know, you'll learn something else about options, but the rate of time decay is the most important contributing factor to making money in options by putting the probabilities of success in your favor. And that's the key. I'm not looking to pick direction, all right? When I put on a call spread or a put spread in, uh, in whatever market, it's not because I think the market's gonna go up or down. It's because the mathematical probabilities are in my favor with the strategy that I'm trading, all right? So you, that's how you put the probabilities in your favor. And of course, again, most time decay drops during the last part of the life of an option. So when you have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday option expirations, you've got this continual pipeline of significant time decay that you can try and take advantage of because it's happening over and over and over again. Before weekly options, you didn't realize the majority of the time decay except for once a month. And that was a couple of three, four days before a monthly option expired. So now all of a sudden, we've got this pipeline of time decay that we can take advantage of. And so the last part of the life of an option is the most profitable time for traders who trade option spreads that are designed to take advantage of time decay. Now, hopefully you've understood everything uh, up till now, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to be a little bit more complex with this, going to break it down just a little bit more for you so you can just see how warped these values really are. All right, so here is an example, and these, this is an at the money option, so all of the value of this option is time value. And uh, these are the different expirations. So same strike, these are just the different ex uh, expirations for that. And three days is at a buck 10, 10 days is at $2, 17 days at 265, et cetera, et cetera. You get up to three, uh, 38, uh, 38 days left. And that option is worth $3.97. And so if you average out the PPD, you have a high of 37 cents PPD, 36, 37 cents PPD, to a low of 10 cents PPD, okay, over the life of the option. But it's actually better than that. And the reason that it's better than that is because we're not gonna hold on to the 38-day option for 38 days, right? The life of, a, of, of this formula, of taking advantage of this formula, is to exit, essentially, um, when the short option is over, all right? So we're not, so if I were to, let's say, sell a three-day option and buy a 38-day option, which is, and in this case, it would just be a calendar spread. And it's not the best, but there are some very solid um, ways to maximize calendar spreads, which I'll talk about. Uh, nonetheless, if I were to sell a three-day option and buy a 38-day option, but then exit both of them in three days, if the market goes nowhere, 
that 38-day option will not have dropped by 10 cents a day. It will have been something less. And so if you take a look at the difference between the 38-day option and the 31-day option, what you find is that it's not 10 cent different, uh, 10 cent per day difference. It's only a four and a half percent, uh, excuse me, cent per day difference, right? So the 38-day option is 397. So in one week, that same option, if SPY goes nowhere and there's been no fundamental changes in, in the market, that same option will only have dropped to about 365. And now it has 31 days left. So it only drops a fraction of what the overall average will be. Now this 10 cent, so at 38 days, when this 38 day option gets to only three days left, you know what the PPD is gonna be on it? It's not gonna be 10 cents anymore. It's gonna be 37 cents. And so you have that difference there. And so the actual PPD difference over the over the uh, three-day option, the life of the three-day option, and over the 38-day option is actually much greater because it's a 30 cents PPD versus a four four and a half cent PPD. And then the 31-day to the 24-day option, that one only drops by a six cents PPD, not 12. So that's actually half of what the overall average is while the three-day option doesn't change over the same three days. All right, do you, uh, you follow me there? So in other words, the three-day option over the next three days actually has a time decay that is 822% faster than the 38-day option. That is what I call warped time values, All right? That is what I call time warp <laughs> so um, that is what we're trying to achieve when we approach um, this uh, uh, this uh, formula in knowing where to what options to sell and what options to buy and there's more to it than that I, obviously i can't go into all of those details when you only have an hour of time um, which is why i'm going to give you an invitation to uh, to learn more, but nonetheless, uh, one other thing that you need to understand about options in order to take advantage of it properly is that when an option is at the money, at no point will that option ever have more time value than when it's at the money, period, right? So if it's out of the money or in the money, the time value is gonna be less than when it's at the money. So as the market moves and makes that uh, particular option at the money, it's at that time that there is more time value in that option than there will ever be at any point in the future life of this option. All right, so uh, keep that in mind because that's kind of what we want to focus on as we begin to put together this formula of being able to sell the, a, uh, a shorter term option and buy a longer term option, we want to sell more time value as a general rule. Okay, now there are exceptions and there are ways to take advantage of in the money and out of the money spreads that way, um, you know, using the same formula, but uh, that that's for another time again, all right? So hopefully that you understand that concept and that formula. Because that is the formula that I would encourage everyone to use to begin to start looking at how they can potentially generate just $10 a week. That's what you want to start off with. That's your goal. You don't want to make a killing. You don't want to make three, four $400 a week. If you can, great. But if you can just do a low risk, high probability approach, garner $10 a week on average over a long period of time and then grow it, now you've got a formula that can create wealth in trading and it's much more simple than trying to figure out that one stock that's about to go ballistic uh, because you're not going to. Uh, uh, most of you, it's just not going to happen. All right, so consistency in option spreads, you got to do the spread simply to keep the, the risk low, 
but the consistency comes by selling the high PPD options and buying low PPD options. Now, there are losses, all right? There are things that overcome this time warp uh, approach. Uh, one of them is market movement, all right? So the market can move enough to create a loss. Um, so don't don't get me wrong that this is that you'll never lose um, and that you'll always make money, et cetera, et cetera. That's not that's not the case at all. Um, there have been times where I've doubled an account in in 60 days, doubled an account in 90 days, tripled an account in four months using what I'm showing you today. And then there have been times where over a 90 day period I haven't done squat, and it's just because the market conditions. Um, were not favorable for that uh, uh, for the uh, approach that I was using with this. So you have to give the probabilities enough time to work out. That's what's going to allow you to create geometric growth, low risk, consistent profits over time, and uh, combined with the proper compounding. All right. So by selling the expensive PPD options and by buying the cheap PPD options. And I've said this, you are putting the mathematical probabilities in your favor. I said probabilities, okay? Probabilities are not certainties. This is why I also say that always, 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 your first goal should not be profits. It should be survival. That should be your first goal. Survive long enough to get to the point where you're achieving your first goal uh, profit-wise, which should be $10 a week on average and then start compounding it. And then increase your ability to do that on a more efficient basis. Go from $10 to $20 a week, on average, again, over a long period of time. So mathematical probabilities are not certainties. You start small, you, you allow the profits to grow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you, uh, in this invitation, I'm gonna give you a five-year, $1 million trading plan. And um, it's going to show you exactly when to increase your trade size based on the approach that I've just given you so long as you make sure that your risks are low and limited, right? And so you can follow that trade size. And then I'm also going to give you an introduction strategy that uses the time warp principles that I've shown you today, where we're selling expensive PBD options and buying um, uh, cheap PPD options, and it's called the one-two punch strategy. And this one-two punch strategy is actually a combination of two different spreads. And it has certain characteristics, and uh, once you learn these characteristics, you will learn how to be able to um, alter the strategy a little bit to achieve um, uh, whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve with any kind of uh, particular trade. All right now, again, the one-two punch strategy, the mathematical probabilities are in your favor. But that does not mean that you will not go into drawdowns and you will not go into some periods of stagnation. It does not always work exactly the same. And again, if you want to achieve wealth, you have to give the probabilities enough time to work themselves out. So uh, what I'm going to do in giving you this strategy is it's, it's one of the best and most simple ways to generate low risk consistent weekly income again over time and I'm going to give you the full trading strategy um, you already have the formula right now I'm going to give you some details behind that formula with one of the ways um, to approach this and I'm going to give you trading signals as well and so you're not going to have to guess how to put this trade together. And it's it's not difficult. I mean, within one month, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's I, I totally understand what you're doing there. Um, so you get trading signals. Uh, you'll get the one-two punch video training. And then you're going to get the complete power of PPD training as well. So I'm really trying to, um, uh, to give you as much understanding of this approach as I possibly can. So I'm going to give you this five-year, $1 million trading plan that's going to tell you exactly, you start off with one spread, and it's going to tell you exactly when to go to two, when to go to three, when to go to four, when to go to five. And if things start going south and market conditions are such that you start to do, uh, hit a couple of losses, it's going to tell you when to go from five spreads down to four spreads, down to three spreads, down to two spreads. Uh, usually, you're not 
going to make that many decreases with this kind of approach because the risk is just so uh, uh, so small. Uh, but nonetheless, you still want that plan in place. So I'm going to give you all that, and it, um, it's six six months worth of signals, by the way. And I'm going to do it for four. $197 to the first 100 in this group that take advantage of that. You can see the link here at the bottom uh, to take advantage of that. Now, that's not the only thing I'm going to give you in this program. I'm also going to release a new strategy to you each month for the next six months absolutely free. So I'm going to build on your understanding of the formula of selling high PPD and buying low PPD. There are many, many, many ways to take advantage of this formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release a new strategy each month for the next six months to increase your understanding and your ability to go after your first goal with with regard to profit, which is $10 a week. So I'm going to give you the one-two punch strategy. I'm going to give you uh, the 27% weekly option strategy. Again, it's just a different way of taking advantage of, of the time warp. I'm going to give you time warp low volatility strategy. It's one of my favorite, um, just just simply because it maximizes the formula that I just gave you. Uh, I'm going to give you my hedged option strategy and then a strategy I called maximizing calendar spreads. Calendar spreads are not that great by themselves. Yet the probabilities you still have a, a small uh, mathematical probability in most cases, or in a lot of cases, I should say. Uh, but there are different ways to take advantage of calendar spreads and use them in conjunction with other spreads. And so you'll see that as one of the uh, one of the lessons as well. And I'm going to include all of those. Uh, they're video lessons, and I'm going to include all of those uh, in this package. Um, now I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I have achieved my goal. Maybe I've completely changed your paradigm. I hope I have. You need to focus on money management, even if you don't want to do weekly options. You say, I know nothing about options. I don't want to get into options. Listen, I don't care what it is you're trading. You need to make sure that you focus on proper trade size with whatever it is you're trading. That's the only thing that's really going to give you any serious chance of, of uh, accumulating any kind of wealth in trading. And um, yeah, hopefully you've seen that just by this what you've seen in the last hour. But I have clients who've been with me for you know, 10, uh, 10 years uh, who've seen everything that I've put out there, and they'll tell you that um, it's just different. What I have is different because I look at things differently than what most standard, even technical analysis. I um, I I debunk uh, most of what you read in technical analysis books. It's it's just bunk. And I give you the reasons why it's just bunk. Um, I give you an understanding. Uh, I, I, that's what, and that's my goal. Is I try and give you a really deep understanding of the principles of what's going on behind the scenes with uh, how you approach trading. And again, uh, you get as a bonus the five-year, one million trading plan. And then finally, I'm also going to throw in one other thing, and. Um, this is probably going to increase your understanding of weekly options and, and how to uh, put together the trade examples. For example, the, the trade example that I showed you earlier where there is very, very little risk over the next two days and the market had to drop down. Well, that projection graph was actually created uh, with a program that I had uh, created called PDS Trader. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you six months of PDS Trader as well. And you'll access the signals through PDS Trader, and you will also have the ability uh, to start building your own trades and, and um, taking what you learn and putting them out into this uh, trade builder, uh, creating this trade builder, and it will show you the projection. You'll be able to... Uh, play around. I have 10 to 12 windows of PDS Trader open at any given time. That's how much I use PDS Trader uh, for my weekly options trades. So I'm going to include all of that. This is a, this is everything that's uh, included in this: the one-two punch strategy, 27% weekly option strategy, time warp low volatility strategy, the hedge option strategy, maximizing calendar spreads, the power of PPD training, five-year 
and a $1 million compounding plan. Again, if you can average $60 a week, if you can get to where you can average $60 a week, non-compounded, over five years, if you properly compound that, that can go into $1 million. And I'm going to give you that plan. Now, you may not reach that goal, but you still want to follow the plan because $10,000 still turns into $38,000, or $10 a week still turns into $38,000 a week using that same plan. All right, so um, absolutely just a powerful, powerful compounding plan. And then six months access to PDS Trader. All right, so if that doesn't convince you, then here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to guarantee that my Warp PPD strategies will outperform the risk-adjusted returns. What that means is if we take the same amount of risk, and most strategies don't risk as uh, such a small number as as my PPD strategies do. It's a very small risk. But you risk the same amount, and my strategies will outperform uh, when you compare them to risk. So if you're trading something that will outperform my warp PPD strategies on a risk-adjusted basis, then I will double your money back. All you got to do is show me um, that that's what went on. I'll double your money back. That's how certain I am that this is one of the best ways to approach trading from a low risk consistent uh, standpoint. All right. So hopefully you've enjoyed uh, the presentation. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to to attend. Uh, we probably don't have time uh, for questions if there are any questions, but if you'll uh, uh, if you'll email uh, support at paydaystocks.com or support at quantumcharts.com, either way, and um, if you have any questions, they will be sure to take uh, take care of those for you.